Hey everyone, Rob Greenfield here, and over the next few days, I'm going to build a tiny house. From tree to tiny house. Yes, that's right, from cutting down the trees to milling the lumber to finishing a tiny house from scratch, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process, and then I'm gonna move in. This isn't just any tiny house though. This tiny house is going to be fully off the grid and built completely out of wood harvested on this property as well as secondhand materials right here from the farm. So this is a tiny house that's designed to work within the land that it's being built on and not be a pain to the land. So where is all of this happening? It's at Le Reve de Gaia, which means the dream of Mother Earth here in southern France. So now it's time to build the tiny house. Okay, so here we are at the wood saw now, and this is where the tree that we cut down on the property actually turns into the lumber. He bought this land about seven years ago, and this has pine forests on it that have been used for forestry for, for decades now, probably centuries. And a lot of it was done in a very unsustainable way. Now he's transitioning this into sustainable forestry and just moving it back into hopefully a native forest that is a place for humans, other species, and the environment to thrive. So he is working on managing it sustainably, using this wood to build, and then also it's his source of income. And behind me is his wood saw. And this thing is incredible. This is the first time I've ever worked with a wood saw, but he bought this for about $8,000 prior because of his work as a forester and it's amazing what this could do in a community. Imagine if a community had this, they could come together and build their houses out of wood locally harvested and it would pay for itself in no time creating jobs and opportunity and working with the land rather than having things shipped and depending upon huge corporations. So we're going to turn the tree into the lumber. So we're working with the trees right now. Right here is a larger one, and this will make the bigger planks. Behind me, he's working with about closer to the size of the tree that we cut down today, and then that's gonna be used to make the posts for the floor. So the larger tree for the planks, smaller trees are gonna be used for basically like four by fours. All of these are trees that were harvested from the land, these have been curing for about six months to a year so that they have the right level of moisture to be easier to work with. So we have finished cutting. Uh, again, a lot of stuff was cut prior to today, but almost everything here is stuff that we cut today. And I wanna show you the different things. So these wide, almost like four by fours, these are for the foundation. And then these are for the foundation as well. And then these, what we're calling planks, are for the roof slash sides. And then these are the floorboards, which you can see are thicker. 
So all of these came from the different sizes of the trees. And we started with the trees. Now we've got the lumber and then it'll go from tree to tiny house. Okay, so now we've got the wood milled and it's time to treat some of it. So we're sanding and we're treating, staining just the flooring. The reason is, is we want nice smooth floors for walking on barefoot, you know, preventing slivers. But the rest of the house, we're not going to sand and we're not going to stain. And the reason why is we're actually experimenting with a as natural as possible build here and over time, it might not last, it's not going to last as long as if it was stained. After the house is no longer something you can live in, it's just returned back to the land, whether it's wood breaking down in the forest or turning it into firewood. So the idea is that we're designing it, you know, extremely naturally with the wood right on the land and the wood can go back to the land. All right, our last step before finally building the tiny house is to take some of these planks and cut them into the right sizes for the flooring, for the walls, and we're using basically a table saw or a, or a skill saw, and if you really wanted to, you could do it with a hand saw, but we've got the tools. All right, so we have the site. Now the first step is to create the foundation. We're having a little bit harder of a time than plan that with that because the, well, we're on a bigger slope than we had thought. So we're having to raise it up. But first step is to create the foundation, level it. Then we're gonna put on the floor. Then we're gonna create the frame. Then we're gonna put on the sides and the roof. And then the last step will be to put in the doors and windows. So we've actually moved the foundation back a little bit so that we didn't have to put it up as high. And one thing that I want to mention is on the bottom, we're using Douglas fir, which is more resistant to rot and will last longer. And then the rest of the housing is spruce. So a little bit of Douglas fir on the bottom that's contacting the ground, then the rest will be spruce. So got the foundation pretty much set and starting to start moving upwards. We just got this foundation set in really just about an hour, which for me was the part that I was the most worried about because I'm really bad at making things level or even, like angles, like 90 degree angles. That's what I have a really hard time with. So that went really, really well. I mean, right now we're just putting these giant screws through and I should mention this is basically the one material that's not secondhand or from the forest. These were bought new. Uh, and this is pretty much the main cost, right? Yeah. The screws. That's the only cost, yeah. And some gasoline. Yeah, for the chainsaw and the saw machine. How much gas do you think we burn? Uh, in, in total, maybe about five to eight liters. Okay. So, so like sixteen dollars, about twenty dollars of okay. gasoline. So two ga two gallons, about uh, you know, less than twenty dollars of the gasoline, some screws, and then the rest. Was from the forest and stuff that was laying around in the barn, so it's looking pretty good. All right, the foundation is done, and we used about 18 of these, and that's it. Wood, 18 of these with the foundation, and now we're putting on the flooring, which is pretty simple. We just have to line that up to make it even, and then we'll have the flooring done. All right, so we have the foundation set, and I am pretty amazed. It's basically two ingredients, wood and screws, and it's solid. It's feeling good. Yeah. It's looking solid, and uh, that only took really probably two hours, and uh, next step, building it up. So we're putting up the frame now, and the frame is about as simple as can be. Antoine said this is the simplest structure that he's really ever built. 
And so the frame is just the four beams. We have one up and we have one sitting here that's gonna go up right now. And then in each of them, there's about 16 screws, uh, these heavy duty screws, both at the top and then at the bottom. So total for the frame, we've got about 30 of these big screws. And then the next step will be to put the planks right onto the frame and we're getting pretty close. All right, so now we're putting up the walls, which is super simple. We're just taking these uh, planks that we, that we cut with the machine, and then we're just screwing them on with a couple of screws, and they have an overlap, and the overlap uh, keeps the rain running down the side so moisture doesn't stay on there, and that's it, about as simple as can be. We're going for simple and natural. We are putting in the last screws to have the sides and the roof done. On the top, there's just a little overlap to keep the rain from coming in. And now we just have to do the front and the back. All right, once we finished up the sides, then we went ahead and put on the front and the back and pretty much the same method. It was just uh, the overlap and making sure we had enough overlap to make sure that rain couldn't get in and it would go down. The other thing that I didn't mention was the doors. We have the door in the front and then door slash window in the back and we had to put in framing for that as well. So just some really simple framing that Antoine put together in order for those to go in. A little spot left up there to do and once we've done that we'll have built out the entire house itself and still a little bit to do on the inside. One thing that I do want to mention is that I did lay things out in a specific order but after everything, there was a lot of back and forth. We had to go back to the saw and cut a few uh, new planks. We ended up cutting the sizes of things many times throughout these couple of days. Here is the very basic framing that we did in order to be able to put in the doors slash windows in the front and back. And you can see the frame here. Just a very simple structure using the same wood from the trees right here on site. So that is the inside of the house. The house is complete. It is quite small, as you can see. So there you have it, from tree to tiny house, that is the whole process of building this very simple tiny house. Now, I want to say that this is designed just to be used during the spring, summer, and fall here in southern France, and it's for woofers or volunteers who are learning organic farming here at La Reve de Gaia. So it's not designed as a year-round structure for one person or a few people to be living in. And the key is, whatever you're building, to design it for the use and the purposes that you have. So I hope that this video has been helpful in realizing how simple it can be to build a tiny house. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through the rest of the processes that I did with the compost toilet and the compost bin and the outdoor shower and the kitchen. I'll walk you through that in the next video and give you a tour of this place as well. If you got a lot out of this video, then make sure you subscribe for more videos to come and like and comment to help this video get out there into the YouTube world. I love you all very much and I'll see you again real soon.